morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, yeah. yeah. Appreciate you doing that. That was such a call. I don't know. Okay. I'd like to welcome everyone out this morning. Thank God for the rain He's given us, right? Mm -hmm. I know how bad we've been needing it, and just thank God for that today. And I uh, just want to give Him praise. Uh, his birthday's coming up, and uh, I know we celebrate a lot of birthdays throughout the year, but I don't know one greater. We're celebrating our Savior, amen? amen. What He's came and done for each of us. In the way of announcement, uh, this week, uh, Tuesday, December 19th, at 6 p.m., we will have a deacon's meeting. When did you, okay? huh? you say? This Tuesday. We still have it on Tuesday? We'll talk about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Larry and Lane's got a lot going on uh, with their mother right now, so we'll see how that goes. Wednesday. 6.30 is business meeting, and then 7 at following that will be choir practice this Wednesday evening. Uh, I don't know if you heard, last Sunday I made the announcement. Our offering for Ebenezer's Children's Home was $1,273. Just thank God for that. Give him praise uh, for that this morning. Uh, December 21st at 6 p.m. is the Deacon Pastor Wives Dinner at Mount Mary Seafood, so be there for that, 6 p.m. December 21st. Beginning in January, we'll be concentrating on our annual Lottie Moon offering starting in January. Our goal is $1,000 for that, and we'll send that in uh, towards the end of January. Our 2024 financial budget will be handed out at the end of service on 12-17 today. There will be a vote on 12:31 to accept the budget. If you have any questions, please contact a budget member. Look on your list and see who is on the budget committee. If you have any questions, uh, please contact them. Kentucky trip is in the morning. Anybody want to ride to Kentucky? 6 p.m. I'll make it easy on you. We'll just ride up and ride back. Oh, 6 a.m. Probably, <laughs> probably 6 p.m. when you get back. <laughs> 6 a.m., leaving from the church. If you want to go with me and Jim and Bobby, I know, uh, uh, let me know. And, and I know that Bobby's going to go and probably uh, ride with Jim if you'd like to ride with me up in the morning. You know, um, we'll be at 6 o'clock. So let me know. So, we Three weeks ago, we prayed about this, right? Then I brought it up. Let's pray. Let's see what God does. Let's see how he works things out. Well, let's just see how he's worked things out in the last two weeks. Uh, last week, Jim and I got a telephone call uh, about some free bicycles. Jim and I went down to Red Springs, North Carolina, picked up 30 bicycles. Uh, we didn't have any backpacks. Well, we had like 21 backpacks given to us by David Blackburn, but we didn't have that large amount, of like 70 from last year, okay? So when we were getting ready to leave, uh, Larry Osmond's wife, Teresa, said, hey, do you want any backpacks? Yeah, well, yeah. We had not had that many this year. She said, well, come back here. Well, she had like 46 backpacks that she was trying to give away. Well, guess what? We're almost back to our 70, right? That we, we didn't have from last year. So we got all those bicycles, we got backpacks, I uh, got another call from John Triplett, we got 25 boxes, big boxes, they're probably almost the size of top of this, kind of. Uh, each box is full of toys, and then we went uh, Wednesday to Walmart and bought more toys. So we've got two trailers, we've got an open trailer full of bicycles, and we've got that enclosed trailer, I went and got a bigger one, and it is full of backpacks and toys. And they really, unless they're watching, and they probably are, they really don't know how much we're bringing up uh, tomorrow. So we're very excited about that. It's the same kids we helped last year, the flood victim kids. And uh, we think, whoa, that was over a year ago. But there's still, most of them still living in tents. 
they're still living in campers, and uh, the families are still not able um, to provide, taking all they've got just to live. You know, so we want to make a lot of kids happy. We're going to have a, a toy giveaway at the church Wednesday, and we're going to provide for that. So I thank God for that. And everyone that's helped, everyone that's prayed, thank you for doing so. You know, I just want to stand here this morning and look up and just say, God, thank you. Amen. Amen. Uh, for providing again, like he always does. And uh, is there any, any other announcements this morning? No creative pictures missing this week. No pictures missing. Any other? They said, uh, somebody said up our last year, uh, Jackie, that we, if it hadn't been for what we took up last year, there had been a lot of kids that would, wouldn't have had a Christmas. Yeah, that's what Beverly told me three weeks ago when she called and asked if we could help her again, that uh, 75% of these kids is what we bring to all their kids. So that there'll be some happy kids. I said, God, I just thank you for using us to make this happen. Any other announcements? No birthdays. No anniversaries. Let us all stand. Everybody stand and stand with us sing.
Jennifer Holden. Anyone else? <coughs> My mom. Jan. I have a praise report this morning. I got a buddy. I got a buddy here today. <laughs> Harold Cox. Hey. Okay. Um, got to spend a lot of days with him, and I picked up one of his sayings. Uh, I used to laugh at him so much because if the nurses came in there, give him a hard time, he would always be like, hold on, you jackrabbit. <laughs> <laughs> And that always make the day brighter here he say that we would laugh. <laughs> but I thank God for having his hand upon me. Amen. 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 Any others? Father God, we just love you so much this morning, Father. And God, we just thank you for loving us, Lord. And just pray for each one of these prayer requests that's been mentioned. God, we just lay them up at your throne right now, Father God. And we just pray if it be your will, you touch each one. Lord, whether they're having tests, whether they're sick, uh, whether they've lost a loved one, God, I just pray now, Lord, that they feel your presence, God, that you heal and protect, God, as only you can. Lord, be with us through the service today. God, as Brother Pete comes and preaches for us, Lord, be with him. Give him the words to say, Father, that we can take uh, today and apply to our lives. God, if there's one lost today in our midst, we pray they accept you as their Savior before it's too late. God, we just love you. We honor and praise you, for it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. You would stand again. Turn to page 181.
you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, and the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day nation. Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? This sleeping child you're holding is the great I
Let it shine. Amen. Let's all stand this morning in fellowship with each other. Nothing like fellowshipping with each other, amen? Uh, we were supposed to be in New York this week on a, a mission trip, and uh, there's just so much going on here. I couldn't leave the church, didn't want to leave the church. Um, we got some ladies that have been sick in the hospital, and I didn't want to take a chance on leaving them and their families, and, and then heading out uh, to Kentucky in the morning. God's just worked everything out, though. And I thank him for it. So I'd asked Pete uh, weeks ago to fill in for me uh, today, and I didn't want to change that because I enjoy hearing him, and, and I appreciate the man of God he is and the word that he stands on. And uh, he's here to speak to us today all the way from Mecklenburg County. <laughs> or Charlotte, whichever one you want to call it. <laughs> the suburb of Ash. <laughs> Um, I grew up in Pineville, which is right below Charlotte, when I was just a little boy. And um, uh, if you go to Pineville now, you can't tell the difference between Pineville and downtown Charlotte. It's grown so much. But when I was in Pineville, there was a Hardee's. And that was it. <laughs> so we had Hardee's and acres and acres of cornfields, which is now all malls and all that stuff. So... Um, but Pete, thank you for, uh, for filling in for me today, brother. We appreciate you and we love you and you come and share with us what God's laid on your heart. That, that Hardee's is a Mexican restaurant now, <laughs> like most of them. Good morning. Good morning to all of you. If you're here this morning, you're not here by chance. You know, you're not here by chance. You didn't plan at birth to be here today. You didn't have that in your plan. You're here today. It's because God appointed you to be here today. And everyone that is. Is here today. Can, can you turn this down just a little bit. I'm hearing my, myself. And I don't sound that good. Start with it. But appreciate Brother Jackie. Giving me the opportunity to come before you today. And to give you a message. And of course. You know when I looked at the calendar. I realized well that's the Sunday before the Sunday. Of Christmas you know. And I'm like. I don't feel like I should bring in a Christmas message because I know that's what he's going to bring next week. I assume it will be the appropriate time. There's appropriate times for appropriate messages from the Bible. There are. And we should respect those as Christians primarily because those are our, our messages to the Christian nation, to the Christmas, Christian world. But I thought about it a lot and I asked the Lord as I pondered about it and thought about it and prayed about what do I bring before before that message and and I found myself reading in the book of Luke in chapter 1 this was this just past Tuesday and I began reading there about Mary and uh, so I read that scripture and I felt the Lord speaking to me about okay this is uh, I see where we're going here I think this is the message you're laying on my heart now that was Tuesday morning well Tuesday 
is my day to work at Billy Graham Library. So I show up there about 9.30, and we always have a devotional time before we're all sent out to where we're assigned to work that day, and we have a time of prayer. And that morning's devotion was Luke chapter 1. And I began to listen to the person present that devotion, and I thought, well, Lord, I believe you just confirmed to me what I'm to preach about. Amen. And uh, so that, that led me to this message. And, you know, it... I want to share with you that one of my favorite aspects of the Christmas season is the lights that we see that people put around their homes and places of businesses and all the different colors and things that, that begin to light up the season of Christmas that we see. And many, some of you know that, well, I, I do live in Mecklenburg County now still primarily, and, and I grew up in Gaston County that's right next door in a little small town of Lowell which is right next to little town of McCaddenville, which some people call Christmas Town USA, right? So all my life, every year of my life, I have visited the downtown of McCaddenville to see the Christmas lights. Uh, my parents worked for the, the textile mills in that town, and the mills had a lot of events for families with their children, and also I'm very accustomed to at Christmas enjoying Christmas lights and I knew the history of the town and how that you know early on over a hundred years ago that area became famous because of lights because it was one of the first industrial plants in America that had electric lights in it those textile mills down there in downtown McAdenville on the river were some of the first industrial plants in America to have electric lights burning in them. Thomas Edison himself came to town to help install his third generator that he made uh, for hydropower off the South Fork River right downtown McCabell. And the big blade of the turbine, which is bigger than this pulpit, is on display and you'll see it as you ride through McCaddenville. They have lights on it and most people have no idea what it is. It's just a great big cast blade that's sitting there in a, in a spot on the ground. I mean, if you didn't know what it was, you just wouldn't know, but it's the, a turbine off of his generator that Thomas Edison. So back then, when those lights were installed in, in, the, in that town, in those textile mills, people came from all over the world to come to that area to see electric lights that they had never seen before. And today, over 100 years later, people still come to McCaddenville to drive through that little town, Christmas Town, USA, to see the Christmas lights. Now, it has changed over the years. Most of the little small wooden frame textile mill houses are gone. The textile companies sold those properties off, and people built much larger, big homes that are so close to each other you can reach out and almost put your hands between the two. But all those folks still decorate, and people come from all over the world still to see the lights there. But that being said... The lights of Christmas represent in a Christian the light of the world. The light that Christ is, that he is the light of the world. And that's what the lights are there to represent. And that, you know, for us, we need to stay plugged in. We've got to stay plugged in to Jesus. We've got to stay plugged into the power source. So how are we doing that? I hope that we're doing it through the word of God. This is where we get plugged in, and this is where we get power from by, by reading and hearing the Word of God. We also get plugged, we get our power from, from being strongly connected in prayer. We must spend time in prayer. It's one of the most gifted things that we could do. I heard uh, an interview with, uh, uh, with a minister, that, a very famous minister one time, that as his long life was coming to an end of ministry, he was asked, what would you do different? in your ministry today that you didn't do. And the person said, I'd spend a whole lot more time in prayer. Right. Now that's a minister. He said, I'd spend more time in prayer, less time doing some other things that I did. Well, that's true for all of us. We need to stay plugged in and spend more time in prayer. And the third thing is, we need to spend more time with the body of Christ. We need to spend more time together. That helps us to keep our connection in Christ strong. 
Get away from people in the church and you'll lose that connection. I promise you, you will. You need to stay connected. So, as we look into the book of Luke in chapter number one today, it tells us a story. It, but it, it, and I asked Isaac this week, I said, you know, here, here was another confirmation. I contacted Isaac during the middle of the week and I said, Isaac, I, I'd like for you to, to play a video with a song that goes along with a message I want to play. And I, I gave him the name of that and it was Mary, Did You Know? And he responded back. He said, well, Pete, Grant's planning on singing that song. See, the plan was already laid. He said, Grant's planning on singing that song Sunday. Is that okay if he sings it instead of playing? I said, that, that's perfect. That's, you know, you just told me I'm on the right path here. And then, of course, and Grant wasn't able to be here today. So we still were able to have that song. I would say that to some of those that I would call this my, my Catholic Christmas message because it's going to be about Mary, okay? And they obviously spend a lot of time uh, studying about Mary. So this would be my Catholic Christmas message about Mother Mary. But let's, let's look today at Mary's walk of faith. Mary exemplified a life of faith in her life once she received the message. And we read about that in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. Let us read. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast her in, in mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Then Mary unto the angel said unto the angel, how shall this be? See, I know not a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing is impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Let us pray. Father, as we, we pray this morning, Lord, that the reading of the word this day, God, that you bless that scripture, Father. I pray, Lord, today that you begin to speak in their hearts today about the faith in their life, about a walk in their life, the experience in their life with Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, Father. I praise you, Lord, for this opportunity to speak, and I pray, Lord, that you'll bless the words of my mouth and the meditation in my heart this morning, God, and anoint me, Lord, with your Holy Spirit to bring your word in Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Mary had a walk of faith and we just read about her walk she received a word from the Lord through an angel Mary had a visit of an angel in a form of a person you know many of us may have had experiences where we felt 
an angelic being being near us. Maybe we didn't see a physical being. But in this case here, I believe that Mary physically saw an angel. The angel had a name. The angel's name was Gabriel. God sent that angel to send the message and bring it to her. So that she would believe that this message was coming from the Most High God. So this angel came to visit Mary. And she received that word. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a young lady, probably 13, 14 years old, not having a experiences like we have been able to have through the teaching of the Word of God and the knowledge that we are able to get, but yet because of her life and because of what God had saw in her life and how she had lived her life and the things she had done and knowing that she was willing and knowing that she would have the faith, God chose her among all the women of the world and He sent an angel to her to give her a message directly from God. He sent that message directly to her for her to see and to believe and to be able to feel in her heart. Mary received that word. Wouldn't that be amazing to have an angelic appearance come to us? Well, maybe we do. So after that angelic encounter, Mary begins a process. And she began a process in her life which some of us need to have in our lives sometimes when we're going through situations and we need to have our faith strongly encouraged. She began a, a, a process in her life of wondering. She began a process in her life of watching. She began a process in her life of praying in faith and talking to God. It would be a little while before she would actually uh, feel in her body a pregnancy. It would be a little while before her body would begin to make changes and things would happen within her. But the process had started. And this process was her actually feeling that within her body that, and that the evidence of pregnancy would soon come. But in the meantime, during all that, she had something she had to do that most young girls have to do in their lives when they find out that they are going to be having a, a little child and, and then they have to tell somebody. And a lot of times that young mother may have to go and tell her mother and her father, look, there's something that I need to tell you and I need to share with you. Well, Mary had to do the very same thing. But she had to go with it in faith and saying that, well, look, I don't know how this is happening, but an angel has appeared to me and told me that this is coming from God and that I am going to be carrying the Son of God within me. But mom and dad, I've not been with a man. I've not been with this man that you see with me named Joseph. I've not been with him. So can you imagine a young girl having to go tell that? Well, in our lives today, many young girls have had to go tell that message to their parents that this is going to happen. But in those cases, they've been with someone. But in this one here was different. This one case was very different. But it was going to be a little while before she had to, would experience those things within her life. She also had to talk to Joseph. She also had to go to the person that was soon to be her husband. That was her friend that was, she had been traveling with, but not physically with. But she was going to have to explain to him what has happened to her. She had no idea how these folks would react. She had no idea what her family would say. Would they believe her? Uh, would they kick her out of the house? What would they think? What would they say? But she knew the customs of the people that she lived, how she grew up. She knew the customs of her life, and she knew what they would expect. She knew those customs. She would carry this baby Jesus for, about, for nine months, she had no opportunity to have ultrasounds. She had no opportunity to see or hear a heartbeat as we would have today. But yet she believed and had faith in God's word that this was going to happen. She had to believe and the faith that it was going to happen. She had a promise from God. And then after that promise from God came, it's much like the experiences we have. Everything just kind of stopped. Everything began to get quiet. She wasn't hearing from God any longer. She had been given a promise. And now she was in a time of waiting. A time of waiting. And a time of praying. And a time of just watching. So has that ever happened to us? 
Have we ever felt like we had a promise from God that God has told us something's going to happen, that he's going to do something for us, or he's going to direct us into an area to go, and we just have to wait? Well, sure, we've had that experience. We just sometimes have to wait. So she had that promise. And she had to watch and wait. And during that time, Mary's faith was being challenged. It was being, her, her faith was being strengthened, but she was being challenged in that. So it has to go deeper. For Mary, there was going to be no more angelic visits uh, to confirm any word that she had received. She, she would, but she would get a visit from her cousin. Her cousin Elizabeth, that was older in age, also was coming to share with her that she was about to give birth. Now, I'm not real clear and I'm not real sure why, why her cousin Elizabeth came to her. But it, maybe it was just to show the experience of a person on the human side that was about to give birth from the, a human birth from a man. To give her an example of how this is going to be. So, for Mary, there was going to be no more angelic visits to confirm it. She just had this visit from, from her cousin. How did she do it? How did she keep her faith as she walked by faith? How, how did she do this watching her cousin? How did she do it and waiting for God's word to be fulfilled? We today sometimes have to wait for God's word to be fulfilled. It, it's, it's a test of our faith. It's a test of our time and our trials that we go through. It's a test of our humanness. How much faith do we really believe in the Lord God? We get tested all the time in that. But here is two thoughts from this passage of Mary's walk of her faith. First of all, Mary prayed about abandonment. She had felt abandoned. Can you imagine, with all she had just experienced, an angelic visit from God, having to go tell her parents, having to tell Joseph, any of her other friends, her cousin Elizabeth, all that she just had to tell them, Mary felt abandoned. She felt alone. Mary also had to pray a prayer of surrender. She had to completely give herself over to what God was about to do. She had to be in complete surrender. <clears throat> in Luke chapter 1 verse 38, we read that Mary said, Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, this is a different interpretation, be it done to me according to your word. See, a bond slave is, is a person that's been bought by someone. So they, they have no rights when they've been bought by someone. They're owned by someone. She had no rights. They, had, they belonged to someone else. So Mary prayed that prayer of abandonment because she felt that she had been abandoned by everyone. If we're going to walk by faith, we must too have the same attitude of a bond slave. If we're going to walk by faith, we must totally surrender to Jesus. Our faith, we have to totally surrender in. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 34, Jesus himself tells us that if anyone wishes to come after me, he must give up himself, totally surrender himself, deny himself, and take up my cross and follow me. Paul also wrote about that. Paul would say that I have been crucified with Christ. This is what Paul says. He said, I've been crucified with Christ. And it's no longer I who live, but Christ that lives within me. That's total surrender. That's total faith in Christ. And that's what was being taught to us there from, from, from Jesus himself to, uh, to Paul himself teaching us. Second of all, as Mary walked by this faith, watching and waiting, in Luke chapter 2, verse 19, it tells us that Mary treasured all these things. She treasured all these things. And it has an interesting word there. It says she pondered them in her heart. She pondered her, them in her heart. Ponder means to converse. 
Ponder means to converse, to bring together in one's mind, to consider and to confer with oneself. So we learn this from Mary. It's okay to talk to yourself. It's okay to talk to yourself. I talk to myself all the time. And I answer myself a lot of time. I have a conversation with Pete. Sometimes it goes well. And sometimes it don't. It's okay to have a conversation with yourself. Talk to yourself. I've seen folks that say, I, I can't pray. I can't, I can't say. And I'm, I try to say, you're talking to God just like you're talking to anybody else. That's all he expects. That's all he expects in your prayer. Just talk to him. Just talk to him. But Mary pondered and she began talking to herself. Can you imagine the conversation she was having with herself about what she was going to go through and faith increasing at the same time in her life? It's okay, folks, to talk to yourself. It's actually, I think, I'd say it's biblical to do so. It's an important aspect of walking by faith. It's pondering and thinking on those things. The promises of God like Mary did. Doing this keeps our, helps us to keep our focus on the Lord and His character. Walking by faith requires us to know who our Father is. It requires us to know who, what His character is. It, and it requires us to know that He's faithful. And it requires us to know that He is a good God. So, when we're walking by faith and we're watching and we're waiting, we're pondering, we're talking to ourselves. We need to stay in that place of abandonment. We need to stay in that place of surrender. Surrendering our life. We need to stay in that place. We need to ponder about His promises. We need to remember them. And to tell them to ourselves. We need to remind ourselves. Every day. In Psalm 77, it says, the, palm, the, palm, the psalmist wrote, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember the wonders of old. It's okay. We also need to stay encouraged. Isaiah, in chapter 55 of Isaiah, he reminds us, so will my word be, which comes, goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty. Without accomplishing what I desire. <laughs> and without succeeding in the manner for which I sent it. And this Christmas season. My prayer to you today. Is that Mary's walk of faith. Will inspire you to walk in faith. There's nothing else folks we have in this world to hold on to. But a belief. But a belief. Because of a request for prayer earlier today. I felt at the close of our service today. I wanted to ask the deacons to come right down here. If you're a deacon here. Or, or have been a deacon in another church. If you're ordained as a deacon. I want you to come. Come. As these deacons begin to come. I want to ask you folks to bring baby Ellie. I want to have the deacons to pray for this child. Where is she? Go, 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 go get her. Go get her. When you're led by something, Pastor Jackie, when you're led to do something, you don't leave without doing it. Deacons, just begin to pray right now. Pray for this child and this test that's coming up for her. Well, they'll go get her and they'll bring her in. And we want to have the deacons to lay hands on this little child and pray for this help for this little child. It's our faith, folks, that brings healing to every one of this world. It's our faith, God, that moves mountains. It's our faith that changes things that we can't change. It's our faith that encourages and lift us, lifts us up. It's our faith. We stand on that faith as a believer in Christ. We stand on that, Lord. It's our faith that helps us to grow. It's our faith 
that causes us to ponder the things of this world. It's our faith. I hope your faith is growing right now, right now where you're sitting. I hope your faith is in being encouraged. Mary had faith. She had to have faith. She was given a task unbelievable. But she carried forth and brought that faith to fruition. And a son was born. Our Savior was born. You can go all the way back into the book of Genesis where it begins the lineage of David. And it tells there that a Savior would be born into the world from that house of David. And it was. And it's Jesus Christ. And he's come forth into this earth just as God promised that he would. Born, lived a life, crucified, buried, rose again, and is sitting on the right hand of the Father watching over us and hearing our prayers. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as this little child is brought forth today, God, I pray, Father, for healing in this body, God. I don't know, Lord, the whole circumstance with it is health, Lord, but you do. You know the thing, you know the things that doctors don't know. You know the things that medical history and industry does not know. And Father, I pray for the family that you'll lift them up, encourage them this time, Lord, this season of Christmas, Lord, as, as we have this time, Lord, in our life. Lord, we just thank you, God, for the opportunity to come before you today. You're a strong God. You're our only God. We have no other hope, Lord, than from you. We have no other place, Lord, to turn to. Father, I just thank you today, Lord, for all that you're doing. I thank you, Lord, for this church. And I just thank you, Father, for the families that make it up and everyone who's come today. And Lord, as we enter to a time of prayer of healing, I just ask you, Father, that your will be done, that you'll touch this child in the name of Jesus, Lord. Deacons, come over and share and join around in this praying church. This little child's got some tough days ahead, and we don't know all the answers. They can't find results from tests. But let's pray for this family and pray for this little child at Christmas that God, that his health would be healed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, Lord. Lord, laying hands upon this little child as you call us to do. I pray, Lord, that you touch it, Lord, and heal her. Heal Ellie, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God. Revitalize its life, Lord, that you put within that body. Renew its life, Lord. Renew its help. Strengthen it. I pray for a mom and daddy, Lord. I pray that you lift them up, God. Encourage and strengthen them, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand, congregation. Let's stand and let's, let's sing the song, Jesus Loves Me. You may not need a book for that, but let's sing that song and, as we close this morning. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him He knows. They are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so.